Hey, so I uh, have been experimenting with creating custom uh, compressors in VCV Rack um, from scratch using comparators and a slew limiter and a VCA. Um, I figured I would show you how you can do that yourself. So I've got a uh, pretty simple drum loop going right now. And this is uncompressed completely. Very simple, just a clock going into a gate sequencer, going into some samples. I've got a Bernoulli gate driving the open and closed hi-hats for a little bit of dynamic movement. And I've also got sample and hold driving the level of those hi-hats for a little bit of more dynamic movement. I'm going through a slew limiter just to prevent any uh, clicking. So you can see this is a very dynamic, uncompressed mix. And in fact, let's, uh, let's drive that home even more. Not entirely, not entirely pleasant. So now I've got that on my scope here, and you can see the uh, the claps and the kick definitely pop out a lot, especially the claps and the snares. Um, the hi hats are very quiet. Now, of course, we could just use a pre-built compressor, like this one from Bogadio. And of course, the way that a compressor works is that above a certain threshold, the compressor will quiet anything that passes that threshold of loudness. But I'm going to make a custom compressor just as an experiment. So again, here is our uncompressed mix. And you can see, as I said, very high peaks, especially on the snares. So let's, um, let's get a comparator. Now, the way a comparator works is that it basically sets a threshold and whenever a voltage that goes into the input crosses that threshold, it uh, outputs a gate. So let me actually get an LFO just to demonstrate. So as you can see, the uh, higher we set this threshold, the fewer gates we get, or the shorter the gates we get, and the lower that we set this threshold, the more gates we get, because our input signal is crossing this threshold. Let me offset this uh, LFO so you can really see. So this is with a very low threshold, we get a lot of gates. This is with a very high threshold, barely any gating whatsoever. So let's get rid of that LFO, and let's instead put our drums through the comparator. Let's set our threshold a little bit lower. Now you can see with higher voltages, higher amplitudes from our LFO, we get uh, we get gates. Because audio voltage is bipolar, uh, we want to have a separate comparator uh, set its threshold to the inverse. So this is at 2.8. Let's set that to negative 2.8. And then use the uh, under output. So anything that crosses under that threshold will also be gated, which means anything loud but on the negative side of the spectrum will also be gated. So now we can just mix those two gates using a Unity Mixer. And uh, you can see anytime there is a spike of high voltage, we get a gate. Whether it's high voltage or uh, strong, strong negative voltage. Basically any high amplitude whatsoever, we get a gate. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this mixed gate into a slew limiter in order to uh, soften those gates and make it more like the curve of a compressor. So let me put that into a slew limiter. And I'll put that back out into the scope so we can see what's going on. I'm going to set my rise and fall times to zero. just So now it's exactly the same as it was before. But now I'm going to very slowly and very subtly increase the rise and fall times. And I've got the, uh, I've got the rise and fall shapes set both to a logarithmic curve. Of course, you can experiment with that however you want. That's the beauty of using a custom compressor is that you can actually um, adjust the shape of the rise and fall time on your compressor as opposed to using just a linear uh, rise and fall time curve, attack and decay curve, which is what you would normally see, at least I assume you would normally see on a uh, like a standard stock compressor. So let me uh, adjust my rise time and adjust my fall time very subtly until I start to see 
more like one big gate whenever there's a spike instead of a bunch of tiny gates. All right, so I think I like my rise time around here. And I'm going to keep my fall time uh, open to interpretation, as it were. So now what we have to do, I'm going to invert this signal. So now it is uh, producing negative voltage. And then I am going to offset it by 10 volts. I've got a 10 volt offset. I'm going to send that out here. So now you can see we've got a high gate and then whenever there is a uh, spike, in, spike in volume on our uh, drums, we get uh, negative voltage going from there. And then of course if we adjust the fall time, there's more of that. So yeah. So now I will use that voltage uh, as the CV control for AVCA. You can already see how that is affecting it. And if we adjust the uh, attenuverter, we get more or less compression, basically. Because it, it reduces the strength of our... It reduces the strength of our signal. Watch the pink line on the scope compared to the VCA. This is with the compressor basically all the way strong at a minus 100% attenuation uh, uh, inversion, I guess. And here it is slightly attenuated. All right, so now all we have to do is get our audio signal from our drums into the VCA and out into our mixer. So once again, for comparison, here is our uh, uncompressed signal. And here is our new compressed signal with our custom compressor. And we'll probably have to do some uh, by ear adjustments of the compressor, but we'll see. Hardly any difference so far. So let's go ahead and turn down the gain on this. You can already hear that that snare has been softened quite a bit. Here, let me, uh, so the pink line is our compressed signal. Here's the compressor with maximum strength. You can see the spikes are much shorter, especially right there, like that one right there. Let's uh, let's increase the fall time and see how that sounds. Very compressed. And then let's uh, unattenuate. We've basically just kind of softened up our mix, made a made a nice compressed drum sound. Now we've got an exponential curve on our rise and fall. It just gives us a different compressor sound. And of course you can adjust the threshold of your uh, comparators as well. And if you want to do this with just one knob, you can get an offset uh, generator. Send that out to a, an attenuverter. Completely invert it. Send uh, the inverted signal to your under comparator and the uh, uh, uninverted signal to your over comparator. Now you can just set the threshold. So this is a very high threshold. This is a very low threshold. What did I have this at before? Like 2.8? Yeah, let's, let's stick with 2.8 volts. This is worth experimenting with, I would say. Learning how to manipulate voltage to get the effects that you want. Um, bonus points if you want to separate the uh, high and low bands and make a multiband compressor this way. Um, you can also make, you know, something like a uh, de if you want. Um, there's lots of options, uh, and of course, you know, lots of opportunities for learning and experimentation.
Honestly, if you're just wanting to compress a mix, you're probably better off just using a compressor, but using the comparator method at least helps you understand what's possible. Maybe you want a saturating compressor as well. You can just put this through something with some distortion, uh, invert your offset signal, send your drums through the distortion, and then out into your VCA. And now not only are you compressing, you're also saturating when it's compressed, not when it's uh, uncompressed. So you get a dry signal when it's not compressed and a saturated signal when it is compressed. This gives you more options. Maybe we'll do that with uh, wave folding instead of saturation. Yeah, so lots of potential options. You can use any other effects you want. Things can just get really fun. So yeah, I uh, hope that was helpful, and see you next time.